All right, hello everybody. This is your host, Arctic Ghost, and welcome back to another episode of the Arctic Popper Show. I am feeling considerably better since my last recording from last week. And as we all know, Modern Masters was recently released on Magic Online and in paper. So I'm going to bring you a couple of decks that get benefits from it. Uh, the first one being Stompy, since that is the most general, probably the most relevant, because uh, everybody loves the deck. So <clears throat> figured I'd bring it to you. Uh... For those of you who don't know what Stompy is, it's pretty straightforward. It's green aggro deck. It's Stompy. It's what it is. You play green creatures. You play some pump, uh, some pump spells, and there you go. Now, everybody has a different way of playing Stompy because everyone has a different way of using their cards. As you can see, my list is a bit different than other people, but um, the sideboard is pretty much the same as what uh, almost everybody's doing now. But I'm not going to bore you as... I did also do Stompy once before, so if you want to know a bit more history of Stompy, you can go back and look at that video in Stompy 1.0. This is Stompy 2.0. So, let's just break it down, piece by piece, and get this deck tech over with, because I'm, I'm sure you guys would rather see me play the games anyway. Uh, first up are the creatures. You have the general ones. You have Nettle Sentinel, the best one mana, two aggro drop. Uh, you have Kieran Ranger, which is obviously great in this deck, because it allows you to only play with one or two lands and still function. Young Wolf, because it takes two removal spells to kill this little guy. And then Skargon Pitskull, because arguably... I guess it's better than Nettle Sentinel uh, in this deck, but arguably it's probably the best creature in the deck because of it, its ability to let not let creatures block it if they have a less power. So those are your one-drops. As far as the... I guess Volscourge is uh, really a one-drop, too. I like this guy a lot. A lot of people don't play him. Uh, I personally like him. I think the lifelink is very relevant, and I like the fact that he flies... So that's why I want him in the deck. As far as 2-drop goes, you got Nest Invader. Now, uh, Nest Invader, I know a lot of people say is not a good card. Why play this over Wild Mongrel? Well, it brings two creatures to the table. Two attackers. Which, when you have 4, 8, 9, uh, 14 pump spells, the token actually makes relevant. Plus, the token combos with Hunger of the Howl Pack because tokens do hit the graveyard. Before they go poof and go away. So they will trigger Hunger the Howl Pack if, I, if I'm if i correct. And then of course Nest Invader is just same base power with Wild Mongrel. And um, I think Volt Scourge is better than Basking Root Walla personally. But that's just me. And then of course River Boa is just amazing. Because Islands are very popular in Pauper of course. And it also generates. Uh, it's possible that I should be playing 3. But I'm going to stick with 2. As far as the pump spells go, oh, and then of course you have Burn Tree uh, Emissary. I almost forgot about that card. I thought I talked about it already. Uh, this card's great because the other th great thing about Vault Scourge is because it's a colorless and, a, and two life, you can go this guy into a one drop and a Vault Scourge. You could go this guy into an Est Invader. You could go this guy into a River Boa. Or you could go this guy into a one drop and a Bone Splitter. It's just very, very good the fact that it's a two mana 2 2 that you can play a second spell with. Even when you're bringing in Gupshot, now you don't have to pay two life. You know, same thing. As far as the pump spells go, you have Vines of Vastwidge, which is more of a counter spell than a pump spell, of course. Uh, but Vines of Vastwidge, of course, is still very good. It's two map plus plus four. Ranker, I should not have to explain this card to anyone. Hunger the Howl Pack is uh, pretty great. Not only is it an instant, but also puts counters on the creature, so the creature stays that big. It's insane with Skargon Pit Skulk, of course. Or with Volt Scourge to make it beefy with Lifelink. Uh, it's also somewhat good with Young Wolf because one trick you can do is... Um, oh, no, that's Undying. God, I keep thinking of Persist when I look at this card. Never mind. Forget what I was about to say. Uh, you can also put on Riverboat to make him a big, you know, regenerator, etc. And then some people have been cutting me to Genicro, some people don't. I personally don't like to play less than two in the deck. I wish I could fit three, but I like Bone Splitter. And having a free plus two plus two is really, really good. And then you have one bone spider to act as kind of the fifth ranker. And then you have two epic confrontation. This card actually kills a lot more creatures than you would think, especially considering the fact that most of your deck is made up of pump spells and creatures that get bigger with pump spells. So, there you go. And then 16 force. You don't really need more than one or two force to function because all your spells are cheap, because you have Kieran Ranger. So, keep that in mind. The sideboard is as straightforward as you can get. Gutshot. Um, can be for Delver if you wanted to, but mainly it's there for Standard Bearer, in my opinion. Feed the Clan for Burn. You could play Nourish, which um, I'm sure most of you know what the Community Pop Challenge is. Anyway, uh, you could play Nourish, but 
This card has a bigger upside and one less life should not make that big of a difference. It's still countering two lightning bolts effectively, but it has a bigger ceiling to counter four lightning bolt to counter three lightning bolts instead. So, um, I think feed. I agree, and I think feed the clan is just much better. The reason why I used to play Norish um, is because I just forgot feed the clan was ever a real card, and now I remember, and that's why I put them in. Then you have Sky Shard Archer. Sky Shard Archer is better in this deck or like Elves because um, in most green decks because you have Kieran Ranger so you can use it two or three times in a turn usually. Gleeful Sabotage is your best naturalize. Natural State could be better because it's an instant but Gleeful Sabotage gets to destroy two creatures so keep that in mind. And then Viridian Longbow to give you some kind of you know like late game advantage. It's also pretty good against Elves. It's good against the Mirror because it's repeatable damage. And with Kieran Ranger of course you get to go ha 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 ha. So... That's the deck. Um, you know, pretty pretty straightforward, pretty stock list, I think. I'm going to take it into a couple uh, test games so you can see how it performs. Uh, you can see how the upper confrontation happen, um, you know, takes hold in the main deck. You can see what Burning Emissary is like. Hopefully I draw it a couple of times. And, uh, you know, we might not use the whole sideboard, or we might. Don't know. But that's it. Uh, if you guys don't know what the Community Popper Challenge is, actually, uh, twitch.tv slash Community Popper Challenge is kind of like... Um, well, it's, it's like a community challenge. Uh, there are eight of us this week. Um, tonight is actually the finals, but you can watch our VODs on Twitch or you can watch our VODs on YouTube. There is going to be a season two. It is going to have better production, better scheduling, better everything. So keep that in mind. If any of you want to follow, head on over to twitch.tv slash communitypopperchallenge, and I hope to see you there. Either way, let's get into the matches, and I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.